A few months ago, I had the privilege of going to the Center for Great Apes. And in one of the orientation rooms, I actually saw a piece of artwork painted by one of the chimpanzees there. And I had this idea that after 25 years of having so many different artists do exhibits here, why am I discriminating against an ape? So we should have apes that paint because they're artists. Interesting. Okay, they are artists, you say. Uh, Could you look at a a group of paintings and know who had painted which one? A lot of these, I could tell the difference between a chimpanzee and an orangutan after seeing the paintings now. And after you heard Patty say that orangutans have big brush strokes and chimpanzees have a little bit smaller but more erotic in the way they paint. Um, Erotic or erratic? Erratic, sorry, oh. erratic, erratic. <laughs> thought erratic. we better clear that one up, yes. <laughs> yeah, erratic. Although erratic. that would be uh, an interesting that exhibition. Be interesting, right? <laughs> That's the next show. <laughs> Listen, Adam, let me introduce you to Estelle Lovett, who's with me here in the studio. She's been sitting very quietly. You may not have been aware of her presence. She's an art critic and an art history lecturer as well. Welcome to the programme, Estelle. Thank you. Nice to have you with us. And I happen to have here a few pictures of the chimpanzees and orangutans in their artwork. Yep. And I'd like to show these to you, art critic Estelle, (laughs) and get your take. Okay, so so what I'm looking at is some images of orangutans and some... That one's a chimpanzee, I think. Yeah, that one's an orangutan. Yes, yes, yes. and chimpanzee here. And um, holding a paintbrush in their hand. And what looks like they're having a lot of fun. This one's even eating the paint. Well, this one's uh, sort of painted its own face. I think we can say uh, that rather than the canvas. Yes. Obviously gone. Oh, no, there is a canvas down here. Uh, But a lot of the paint is on on the face. face. Yes, (laughs) yes. Yes. Well, it is quite delicious being an artist. But, you know, what I like about it is the fact that the monkey has gone over to the other side of the canvas where we had Jeff Koons immortalizing bubbles in a porcelain sculpture. You know, Jeff Koons, one of the the greatest American artists living today. And now the monkey's going on the other side of the canvas, deciding to have a little bit of fun with messy play. We know that they have a fairly good range for color selection. Yes, that Um, that could be quite important, couldn't it? I mean, this one with the orangutan, I, I would call this jungle sunset. There's a uh, or something. There's a lot of green. There's a lot of green. Di- a lot of burnt sorts of orange. Green and and yes, sort of yep. sunsetty colours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you know, they're holding a paintbrush in in the way that we would do. They may use their knuckles as well. Whether or not it's a conscious, calculated decision, uh, as much as y- you could say any of the abstract expressionists like Pollock or Rothko, we're not saying that it is that. You know, we're just saying these colours are great. There's marks. The interesting thing is, when does an abstract work of art become an emotional response to yes. the world around us in my opinion it's when there is more than one line or more than one mark it becomes an abstract emotional expression you know so who's to say this is not appealing art adam <laughs> brand listening in though i mean uh, just as estelle was saying is it conscious she's not sure what do you think do you think these animals are selecting the colors consciously thinking all oh, this looks like a lovely jungle scene this is how I'm interpreting it. Um, <laughs> or do you agree with her that perhaps it's not that conscious? Well, a chimpanzee and orangutan, probably at the, at the stage of where their age group is, they probably have the mentality of anywhere between a three and a six-year-old in the way they're creatively thinking. And, you know, if you remember the days of when you were a little girl in a, in a classroom and the teacher said to you, let's paint a picture and express to you what's on your mind. And you would probably paint something abstract in the way of formating colors on a sheet of paper or as this exhibit is all on canvas and paint something of creativity. And so when the question is, have people been asking us, is this art? Absolutely. Could they be taught to paint better, Estelle, do you think? Well, I mean, I'd be very interested in having that job. You know, <laughs> to see, you know, the, the thing is um, that, that Adam was saying, you know, that they, they have the brain capacity of a three to five year old or whatever. Mm. And, uh, you know, how many children listen to you at that age? So to have, you know, it could be I'm sure that if, if they were trained to listen to music like they do with elephants, you know, every time there's a, a middle C or whatever, you go for the yellow. Or what, so no, why not? Why, why can't they be taught? But do we want to teach them? This is their self-expression. Yes, it might ruin their artistic creativity. 
don't want them to cut off their ear like Van Gogh, you know. (laughs) Where would they put their paintbrush? (laughs) 